Yes? <laughs> yep. Um, well, everybody's preached my message, so there's coffees in the back. <laughs> See you next week. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to dive straight into the Word, and um, I'm going to read from uh, John chapter 6, verse 1 to around about 13. And it says, um, Jesus feeds the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of Galilee. That was the Sea of Tiberias. A great crowd of people followed him because they saw signs he had performed healing the sick. Jesus went to the mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near and Jesus looked upon and saw a great crowd coming towards him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked him this to only test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. You know, a little sermon before I actually start is, God always knows what God's going to do. Uh, and when God asks you what you're going to do, it's not because he needs your ideas and he wants to know. He, he asks you because he wants to know what you're going to do. He doesn't need your our hints, our ideas. He's going to do it. Um, thank you. I thought so. We should do what God's going to do. You know, um, Philip answered him, it would take more than a half year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another disciple, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. And he said, here's a, boy's, here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will this go among so many? Jesus said to him, have the people sit down. There's plenty... There's, there was plenty of grass for the people to sit down. There were about 5,000 men were there. So they didn't actually, sorry to offend the ladies and the children, they didn't count the ladies and children. But there were 5,000 men, and obviously there were ladies there as well. Um, so there were roughly about 10,000 people there. Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed those to those who were seated. They ate as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they all had enough to eat, he said to the disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So he gathered them and filled 12, bas filled 12 baskets with pieces of barley loaves and leftover fish. After the people saw the sign Jesus, saw the sign Jesus performed, they, they said, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. You know, this morning... From what's been going on, I'm going to talk about Jesus is my provision. And I'm going to look at the area of, of our lives that involve resources, provision, finances, and money. You know, the third most talked about subject in the gospel is money. And it's not because Jesus wants our money, but it's because Jesus wants our heart. You know, the Bible teaches us that where our heart is, so is our treasure. And, you know, so much of our lives, our emotions, our dreams are connected to our resources. We might not like to admit it, but they are. Um, so when I talk about finance this morning, we're talking about heart issues. It's all relating to your heart. Like I said, Jesus talks about so much about money, not because he wants our money, but he wants our hearts. You know, it's a heart issue when it comes to finances, savings, income debt bills and the stuff generally the stuff of life it can wrap our heart up so much with our existence on earth now I'm going to ask you a, a question this morning have you ever danced with a stranger yes <laughs> and by this I don't mean going up to a stranger and saying Mark do you want to do a two step or anything <laughs> I, I did this um, earlier on this week I uh, had to go and visit a, a customer for a, a technical meeting and um, uh, during this meeting, I had a phone call and I had to pass some information back to one of my work colleagues. So I left the meeting and I was outside in, in the corridor. And because I have mobile phones, I'm the same in the house with a hands free mo um, phone. I just have to, because I can, I'll just pace up and down like that. And I was outside pacing up and down in this corridor. And I'm walking down, phone call's about to finish, so I start walking back to this meeting room. So I'm there like that, walking along, and there's this guy coming down the other way. And you do the natural thing where 
you go like that, and, <laughs> and you both go the same way. And we, we're doing this for like what seems like a couple of minutes, and it's like, look, which way are you going to go? And I'll just go the opposite way. That's, that's how we'll get past. So that's like dancing with a stranger. And, and you know, in John chapter 6, Jesus is intentionally dancing with Philip, if you will. You know, he's asking him which way is he going to go regarding finances. You know, the Bible says that they've got 10,000 people there with that hungry look on the face. They're all looking to Jesus to feed them. And when Jesus asks Philip, where should we buy bread for these people to eat? You know what? Jesus has no intention of buying anything. You know, he's the son of God. He can make anything. You know, the Bible says that this is a question that Jesus posed to Philip. And it was a test. In the Greek word, in the Greek language, excuse me, the word test means to see which way a person will go. You know, Jesus approaches Philip and asks him, which way are you going to go, Philip? You know, as Christians, we can be really Jesus-centered, especially in church. And, you know, I can be Christ-centered at work and, and down the gym on Sunday mornings. I'll be there working out, training, praying. And I can be really Christ-centered. You know, but there's one area, especially in my own life, which I'm speaking to myself here as well, that can eliminate every aspect of spirituality in my life and that's the issue of money you know I can do pretty well emotionally physically spiritually you know we can do pretty well making Jesus the center of everything but as soon as it comes to money I can become an instant atheist it's like the existence <laughs> of God isn't there you know when it comes to our money we can start functioning like an atheist all our belief has gone you know, we believe that we are the God of our money. I must fix my money. I must make more money. I must save more money. You know, there's something about resources and, and finance. You know, it, it's so natural. It's not a dirty word, money and finances. Yet we don't like talking about it. We feel that money shouldn't be talked about in church. But money is connected to our heart. And as a church, we should talk about money. You know, Will hasn't put me up to this. This is just what's, what's coming off my heart. Um, you know, money has much to do with the life that we live on this planet. And God is concerned about the life that you live. You know, when it comes to our provision, when it comes to our finances, I wonder if God is asking us, which way are we going to go? You know, when Jesus asked Philip what he was going to do, his instant reaction was, was logic his instant reaction was reason his instant reaction reaction was the mentality of just enough you know Philip gets his calculator out and he's there um, well maybe I could get bread at cost from this guy and a couple of fish and yeah maybe I could divvy it up between people and yeah they might get a bit <coughs> to eat and then he kind of thinks yeah no nah, forget it it's a stupid idea you know, and then Jesus, um, Andrew steps up and suggests feeding the 10,000 with a little boy's lunch, two fish and five barley loaves. You know, at this moment, Philip was probably grateful that Andrew had come up with this stupid idea because it took the, uh, <laughs> took the focus off him for a bit. You know, but this is like you and me. When we're faced with financial issues in our lives, Jesus is present in our life. Jesus is with us. But when it comes to finances, we instantly go back to spreadsheets and little lunches and just enough. You know, I'm, I'm not against spreadsheets. I use them every day. But so often we just revert to just enough. You know, but let's get, give Philip a bit of a break here. Let's give him a bit of credit. You know, Philip's been raised the old way in traditional customs. You know, he's been trying to adhere to over 200 Jewish laws. He's been trying to be strict and legalistic. And to be fair to Philip, this is all he's ever known. And Jesus is testing him. Are you going to go back to the old way, the legalistic way, the just enough way? Or now that I'm in your life, are you going to realise that there's a new way to live? And there's a, even there's, there's a new way to approach your money? 
You know, Philip speaks up, Andrew speaks up, and then Jesus speaks up. Jesus doesn't even respond to the ideas of Philip and Andrew, which I find quite funny. Uh, you know, and what about, is about to happen is the greatest demonstration of God's supernatural providing power. You know, the disciples are going to get a ringside seat. They're about to f- get, find out that when you come into a relationship with Jesus, it will even dramatically affect bread and fish. You know, our relationship with God can even help us practically. You know, and this is how it starts. I want to share five distinctive points when it comes to the Jesus way about our finances. You know, not the old way, not the the way of logic, not the way of just enough, not the way of reason, but the Jesus way. And here's where it begins. Point one, Jesus makes us sit down. You know, how unorthodox is, how illogical is this? You know, if you're hungry, if you're in need, if you're in lack, sit down. You know, personally, if, if I'm hungry, if I need something, the last thing I want to do is sit down. The first thing I want to do is get up, start worrying, how are we going to do this, how are we going to do that? But Jesus makes us sit down. You know, the first thing of doing things the Jesus way is when it comes to your finances, resting is more than enoughness. You know, reject worry, anxiety, fear in the areas of finance. God has been providing for humanity since the dawn of time. You know, and he's got a pretty good record. You know, he takes care of us. He clothes us. You know, it says in the Bible that he clothes the lily, lily of the valleys. You know, he will provide for us. As Christians, we should have a profound peace in our lives when it comes to um, our finances. And this is where it all starts, sitting down and resting in his more than enoughness. You know, even when we become Christians, accepting Jesus starts with resting in his presence. Not standing and pacing and and running and worrying, but resting and accepting that what Jesus has done on the cross, this is where it all starts. You know, so often in life, we can be fine in certain areas emotionally, we can be sitting down, relationally we can be sitting down. And then in areas, there can be areas in life where we can have great peace. And then in certain areas, of life we can it feels like we have complete chaos you know God wants you to experience peace in every aspect of your life even the area of finances you know I pray that today after my talk that we would go out of here just sitting down and resting in his peace point two Jesus tells his so Jesus tells his disciples to go sit the the multitudes down now you have to understand the cultural context of this, of these 10,000 people here. They were living in an ancient time when there was no fast food, there were no burgers, bars. Like, if you go to a music festival, there's, the crowd's normally there and there's normally burger bars so you can grab something to eat. There was none of that. You know, there was no eating on the go. And eating in the Jewish culture would have been a two or three hour ordeal. So here they are, the 10,000 people. So they're hungry. The disciples are hungry. Jesus knows that they're hungry. And they know that Jesus knows they're hungry. But then Jesus makes them sit down. So when the 10,000 people are being sat down, they would automatically assume that they were being sat down to eat, to have food. They would assume they were going to be seated to eat. You know, and that sounds pretty reasonable. We go to a restaurant, we sat down, we expect to eat. But here there's one slight little problem. Can anybody tell me what it is? There's no food. You know, the people don't know this, but the disciples do. And you know, if I was one of the disciples, I would have sheer panic. Look, you're making us sit people down. People are going to get angry when they find out that there's nothing to eat. So disciples are walking around, sitting people down. 
And you know, in a crowd of 10,000, you're going to get a few rebellious people who are, and a few troublemakers that are going to, aren't going to take orders for no apparent reason. You know, he's bound, the disciples have bound to have come across a few people who, who won't sit down and take orders. You know, hi, my name's Bill, what's your name? Well, why are you telling me to sit down? Why should I sit down? You know, there must have been a couple of people out of 10,000 people putting two and two together. They're sitting them down to eat food. Luckily enough, the people don't know that there's no food. And the disciples are probably saying to each other, look, we have a little lunch that will barely feed a grown man. You know, we don't have any food, but Jesus is telling us to sit the people down. You know, if it was me... I'd say to Jesus, look, Jesus, this is a great idea. I recommend sitting the people down to eat. Um, but before I start sitting people down, um, can you pump out a couple of loaves for me? You know, one, two, three, four, five. Great. I trust you now. I believe that, that you're gonna, you can make this food. And right, come on, everybody. Get sat down. It's food time. You know, we can trust God when we see him providing, but when we don't see him providing, providing when it's not tangible in our lives we start to panic Jesus makes them sit down and then he gives them the expect expectation of food before they even have any you know this is how it works when it comes to the Jesus way regarding your finances you have to pre prepare for abundance even when there's only lack you know like I said I'd rather have Jesus make some food first and then I'll sit everybody down. But God makes us sit down and makes us prepare for the abundance that he has for us. You know, this is, must have been really awkward for the, um, for the disciples. You know, the, disi the disciple Peter must have had a few run-ins with some people as he was trying to get them to sit down. You know, Peter was engaging. You know, if somebody was going to ask Peter a question, you know he was going to say something back. You know, one guy, excuse me, Peter, uh, what are we going to have to eat? Look, just don't worry. Just shut up and sit down. It's going to be good. Um, Peter, you know, because we're at the back, um, do we get served last? Just sit down, else I'll serve you something. <laughs> you know, he was, there was going to be some confrontation there. You know, this is a real test of faith for the disciples. Living the Jesus way, somebody's going to think you're crazy. You know, you're going to be sat there with your knife and fork, your napkin tucked in, going, woo, this is going to be good food, yet there's nothing in the cupboard. You know, somebody's going to cart you off to the loony bin. You know, but this is what Jesus calls us to, a life of faith. And I'm talking to myself just as much as I'm talking to everybody else. He's calling us to a life of faith, of trust and obedience. The way we prepare for ab abundance is with our mouth. If we're always talking about how broke we are, how much we are in lack, it will never help improve our finances. If we're always talking about how in debt we are, it's never going to help us get out of debt. Church, prepare for abundance. Amen. You know, Jane, Jane took a large part of my um, sermon this morning. Uh, but, you know, isn't it great news about the youth weekend away? Yes. You know, the all God provide a little, they gave them a, they got a hundred pound, and then God goes far beyond Jane's expectations, she ends up getting three, three hundred pounds, you know, what a blessing, God provides, and are you pre preparing for abundance in your life, Jesus asks us, which way are we going to go, the old way, or the Jesus way, we have a God of more than enough, Point three, things get weirder. Andrew sort of kind of becomes a hero here because his idea kind of gets utilised. And so Jesus asks, okay, I'll take the kids to lunch. And Andrew's like, yes. Well done, Philip. You know, Jesus takes the five barley loaves, which aren't loaves like we'd get, like a thick sliced loaf. It's barley loaves with like the size of basically a dinner roll and two small fish, two little sprats probably. 
You know, this is a lunch for a little boy. It's not even going to feed one grown man. And Jesus holds this up before the 10,000 people. And then he thanks the Father. Now I'd be thinking, what are you thanking the Father for? You know, we look at this hilarious situation. 10,000 people. Jesus is stood there with a couple of loaves and he thanks the Father. I'd be, thanks, I'd be like, thanks, thank you, Father. You've clearly provided for all these people here. What's going on here? You know, if they said grace at the beginning of the, the distribution, I'm sure there would have been some, um, if there was bowing of heads and closing of eyes, I bet all the disciples were lined up there with their eyes closed. And, What's going on? We, we haven't got anything. You know, this must have looked mental to the disciples. You know, it's like them walking into the lion's den. They're going to get ripped apart if people find out that they've been seated and there's no food. But here he is, Jesus thanking the Father. And that's how it works the Jesus way. When you realise that the, the little, that what you have, as little as it may seem, can be the key to God's miracle when you need abundance. Jesus thanks the Father, and the Father works the miracle. This is how it works the Jesus way. Church, let's develop a, a habit of thanksgiving. You know, we can give away thanksgiving to people in our world. You know, people we come across daily, at work, our friends. You know, just begin to thank God for those people in your life. You know, even thank God for our inanimate objects. Lord, I just thank you for... For my car, Lord, I just thank you for my my house, Lord, I just thank you for my job. You know, just cultivate that spirit of thankfulness. You know, there's always something to be thankful for. You know, develop that attitude of gratitude. You know, it's difficult to be worried about what we don't have. It's difficult to be worried what we're lacking when we're always being thankful for what we do have. Let's develop that lifestyle of seeing the five barley loaves and the two fishes, the miracle that they are. You know, the fourth distinctive is join the distribution plan of God. That's where the miracle plan is. Join the distribution plan. The word distribution means a systematic and strategic way of sharing. And God wants to share the good news of his son. God has a system and a strategy of how, it's, how he's going to do it. And it's absolutely fantastic, this this, um, strategy he's got. It's called the local church. The church is God's distribution plan for the world. When you get involved in the distribution plan, the the miracle will manifest in your own hands. You know, Jesus gives out the bread and fish to the 12 disciples. And this is what ends up happening. He prays over it. He thanks the Father for it. And then they start to distribute it. You know, the disciples are there handing it out, but it's not running out. They're handing it out, but it's not running out. They keep handing it out, but it's not running out. They keep handing it out, but it's not running out. You know, we're probably going, have you got any bread left? Yeah, I've, I've still got a basket full. Uh, okay. Yeah, so they keep giving it out, but it's not running out. You know, what's going on here is God's mira- miraculous distribution plan. You know, God is so passionate about people that he will always provide for people. Yes, amen. If you can get in on the assembly line known as the local church, you can get in on that miracle. The manifest miracle will be in your hands and you'll realise that our God is a supernatural provider. You know, get your resources involved in God's distribution plan. You know, I can't explain it, but God will provide. Jesus talks about tithing only once, and that's in Matthew 23. You know, one time Jesus talks about tithing. And why, why only once? You know, maybe it's because when you're in a love relationship, percentages aren't the primary focus anymore. 
One time Jesus mentions tithing. Why? You know, because when you're in a relationship, you don't talk percentages. You know, Lisa and I have been mar married 12 years. That's right, isn't it? <laughs> 12 years. Ooh, you know, she doesn't get 80% of me and I keep 20% of it. You know, what's mine is hers and what's hers is hers, you know. <laughs> That's how it works in marriage, isn't it? You know, when you get married, you're declaring that we're in this together. A love relationship doesn't have a set allowance. You know, church, I'm going to ask a really quick, hard question here. Are we going to keep talking about 10% or how much we should give? You know, I'm going to pose a question. Maybe the question is, how much should I keep? You know, I'm really talking to myself here because this is an area I, I struggle in. You know, how much should we give? You know, that's the question we should ask. You know, I've seen God move and, and, and bless us all throughout our married life. We've never been without lack and we've been close to the wind a couple of times. But, you know, God just provides so, so much for us and, and we've never gone without. And I want to share something that happened to me at the... Um, the gym the other morning. Um, I um, I go down the gym most Sundays before church and wakes me up. And I was on the cross trainer working out, and um, there was a guy training with a, a girl, and they got up and and they moved and went and got changed, and they they left the gym. And um, I walked over to where they were training, and I found this um, heart monitor watch, and um, instantly I thought. Oh, how much is this worth? And I thought, no, I'll hand it in. So, so sorry if that shocked you. <laughs> and he leads us in worship every week. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought, oh, this is worth something. And I thought, no, if I'd lost something and it was mine, I'd, I'd, I'd expect somebody to hand it in. So, you know, I did the right thing and I handed it in. And after a long story um, other things went on but um, I approached this guy and I, that I saw, saw training the week after and I said did you get your heart money to watch and, and there was different things going on but he says yeah I finally got it back he said um, he said, I want to sort you out I said look just don't, don't worry he said look it's a £350 heart monitor he said it's got all my, my stats when I'm training and everything I plug it into my computer blah blah blah, blah. I said, it's £350. I, I just want to thank you for doing the right thing. I said, look, just don't worry about it. Anyway, I went down the following week and he came up to me and he gave me a Tesco's uh, and Asda voucher for, for £30. And, you know, that, that week we'd had the gas bill to pay, we'd had the electricity bill to pay, everything kind of all of a sudden came at once. And, you know, that, that bit of money... I was able to go shopping and get food. Wonderful. You know, God always provides. You know, it's miraculous that when we get involved in God's distribution plan, the miracles happen. Yeah. You know, in this story of the feeding of the 10,000, there's no um, mention of the disciples asking when they're going to eat. They don't ask, look, when am I going to sit down? When am I going to get mine to eat? You know, the disciples are here, so caught up in the miracle that's manifesting in their own hands. They're so overcome with how this little lunch is feeding the multitudes. They're so amazed by this miracle that's happening. And that's what it's like when we start pouring our resources into the local that's church. Great. You know, God will supernaturally use our life to nurture others, to help others, to aid others. You know, and in that moment we forget about ourselves because the miracles are happening. Church, we need to get excited about the miracle. Amen. You know, the more we give out, the more you realize that it's not running out. You know, God will always provide. You know, and it gets better. Everybody ate more than enough. And that's the Jesus way. No one was overseen. Nobody reached into the basket to take two loaves and the disciples just slapped that. No, one serving. You know, everybody ate more than enough. There was no lack. 
and there's no lack in Jesus, there's only abundance. You know, the disciples were saying, have as much as you want, eat as much bread, as much fish as you want, eat until you're full. You know, after this, Jesus tells the disciples to go and collect the leftovers. They fill one basket, and they fill two baskets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and at the end of it, they have twelve baskets. You know, isn't that odd? What are the chances of that happening? How many disciples are there again? (laughs) You know, I wonder if Jesus said, hey, you 12 guys, what do you think we should do with these 12 baskets? I can't quite decide what I'm going to do with them. You know, the disciples were busy serving, loving and giving. And when it was all over, each one of them has their own basket of food. That's how the distribution plan of God works. God just supernaturally provides. While we're serving, while we're giving, while we're helping, God provides. Get involved in God's divine, systematic, strategic distribution called the church. It's God's supernatural provision on the earth, the church is. And finally, the fifth point. Jesus tells the, the disciples to gather all the fragments that are left over. You know, and and this tells us why God provides. Ultimately, God's provision is so that nobody is lost. You know, gathering the fragments so nothing is lost. You know, this isn't just about bread. It's about people. You know, God does not do lost. He does not do lostness. You know, God's providing power is at the very core of God's desire that nobody should be lost. You know, when we can connect our bottom line to God's finish line, when you can connect your resources to those who are lost and found, our money will take on a mission, your money that will go go on to take meaning that goes beyond itself. When we give we find perspective, clarity and peace in the area of our finances. You know, instead of thinking of income and outgoings, when, instead of thinking about debt, think in the terms of lost and found. How can we get involved in the search for, for the lost? How can we get involved in God's great rescue plan? How can we use our, our skills, our passion, our abilities, our zeal, to create income. You know, think about the privilege, the honour, that our our natural money, neither good or bad, money's not good or bad, but it's neutral, you know. It's just money at the end of the day. It's meaningless paper with the Queen's head on it, but we can use it to serve the King for eternal purposes. You know, as a church, and as a church leadership, we're grateful for your for your giving and your faithful tithing. But I want you to realise that, you know, you, you just don't give to this church just to pay Will's wages. You don't just give to this church to, to make sure the general running of the church is happening. You know, your money has an eternal purpose and it goes far beyond what we could ever imagine. That's right. You know, I pray that this morning that when it comes to our finances, we would reject fear, reject worry and anxiety. That we wouldn't just look at just enough. That we wouldn't go back the old way. I just pray that we would go the Jesus way. Amen.